good morning. So, uh, I apologize for the very hectic uh, upload schedule. Well, actually, for the lack of an upload schedule. I'm very busy most of the time, and so I don't get a lot of time to record videos usually. But uh, I'm going to put this one out real quick, just to make sure that I have something up. Uh, and hopefully I'll have some more coming up in the near future. Thank you to my, uh, I believe, two subscribers. I, uh, I didn't begin this undertaking in an attempt to get famous or, or anything like that, but it is uh, encouraging to know that there are people who would like to hear uh, some of my ideas. So the thing I want to talk about today is concerning the issue of uh, human thriving. So this is a, a, a concept that you may see used uh, by traditionalists, by uh, conservatives, uh, especially religious conservatives. So I want to talk about the concept of human thriving and what it actually means and how it's distinct from modern notions of human well-being. I think the concept of human thriving differs in probably two major ways. One, it is oriented towards the ends and not the means of human living. We'll talk about that in a second. And, and the other is that it is a very much more uh, communal thing and a more holistic thing. It thinks about the health of a human being as a whole, uh, spiritual, physical, and emotional, as well as the health of a society as a whole, spiritual, physical, and emotional. Uh, backtracking a, a bit, we'll talk about the distinction between the means and, and the ends. So I think a good example would be to talk about uh, some conversations I've had with my father. So, as you may know, I'm, I'm 20 years old, I'm a very young man, uh, but as I was leaving the house, I remember my father had many concerns uh, about me going into the world. Uh, one of these was my choice of profession. I chose to go to school to teach high school, and if any of you know anything about teaching as a profession, it's not incredibly lucrative. Uh, especially because I haven't exactly ruled out the idea of teaching parochial school, which is even less lucrative. Um, and my father was intensely concerned about my material prosperity. And he even went so far as to suggest that I go into engineering, which I had no desire to do, but he, he knew that it would be more materially prosperous. On the one hand, I can't fault my father for wanting me to be a successful and wealthy person. On the other hand, I can't help but think that if I was in his position as a father of my own children, I would be con more concerned with my children's spiritual goods than with their material wealth. I would be more concerned with my son's intentions to marry. I would be more concerned with his intentions to leave home or to stay around his family. And these are things that didn't exactly come up in conversation, and I had to broach these topics with him. Another interesting thing is that while my father is Catholic, although he is divorced and so therefore um, out of the state of grace, uh, he would have encouraged me, I think, to, um, to pursue uh, my... Uh, con conversion into Catholicism in my confirmation, but he never broached this topic by himself. It was me who took the the initiative, and then he followed along afterwards. And I, I thought this was rather odd as someone who necessarily believes in the doctrines of the church, who has espoused this belief, and yet is, has was not encouraged uh, to either have his children participate in the church in any way or to encourage his grown children to seek the guidance of the church. That was a very interesting thing, and I think it showed, not to my father's detriment, how he has been conditioned, and I think many people these days have been socially conditioned to think more about the means of human living, uh, namely wealth, uh, than anything else. And this is the, the marker by which uh, many people view the, the value of life. Excuse me. Another area where I think this is apparent is economics. So often economists will talk about GDP growth, they'll talk about interest rates and things of this nature, and that's all well and good. 
the thing about economics is it's a science and it's detached from emotions and and that's all well and good but when you're talking about average everyday people at, at some point the economist needs to step away from uh, figures and think about what's good for the society as a whole a great example is the migrant issues so a lot of economists have uh, endorsed uh, mass migration it if that's what you want to call it uh, for the simple fact that it will increase GDP growth uh, because many of these countries in Western Europe and the United States have aging populations and so they need a more dynamic and younger workforce to fund social safety net programs and to fund uh, sorry to fuel economic uh, growth and that may be true but this also leaves no regard for the uh, identity of the European or American peoples and it leaves no room to talk about the social problems that will necessarily uh, occur as, a, as a, uh, a result of this policy. And so that's another area in which it is blatantly obvious that the modern world is operating under a fundamentally materialist paradigm. And there's one more that I want to point out, and this is the arguments surrounding the abortion debate. Now, I know many people obviously don't share my beliefs about the humanity of the unborn child, but many of the uh, arguments for abortion are predicated along utilitarian lines, and not just utilitarian lines, but often uh, very, I, I would say, childish emotional lines. They'll say things like, uh, you know, women should not have to be burdened by children they do not want. Um, it it uh, hampers their their career, um, you know, it hampers their ability to succeed in life, it sets them back, so on and so forth. And this sets up the bringing into the world of new human life, uh, which is anyone would recognize that is what the process of pregnancy does. It sets it in opposition to all the material goods that a woman can accumulate in her life. And so, and therefore, it evaluates these two things and it says, well, the bringing in of, of human life, which is a physical, spiritual, and emotional good, is obviously inferior to this woman's ability to collect wealth. And so, therefore, uh, the the right to collect wealth should should trump the the rights of this uh, unborn or potential human being. We'll say. Um, and the the last thing I want to talk about is is how uh, human thriving as a concept is more uh, holistic and more grand, and it, it works on a larger scale. So you can't talk about a single person thriving. I think. Because when you have a single person thriving, it necessarily uh, entails that there is a, a cadre of people around him who are facilitating his thriving. That human beings are fundamentally social creatures. And so if, if one, one person on their own, I, I believe, can't achieve uh, a certain level of eudaimonia or, or good living, and it requires a, a systematic approach of multiple individuals, uh, and, and this occurs across the society. So it is, it is in keeping with, say, the uh, Catholic idea of subsidiarity or locality, where smaller units build and create larger units. And if the concept of human thriving is contained in the individual, it will be manifest in the family. If it's manifest in the family, it will be manifest in the church or the community. If it's manifest in the community, it will be manifest in the municipality. If it's manifest in the municipality, it will be manifest in the state, in the country, and so on. And so in this way, human thriving is a concept that uh, is necessarily uh, all-encompassing, whereas prosperity is very individuated. And even when you talk about um, sort of... Uh, you know, moving wealth around, uh, what you're really talking about, you know, for, for example, wealth distribution uh, schemes, what you're talking about is, is moving individual prosperity from different individuals to other individuals. And so in that way, concepts of material prosperity are very individualistic and very atomizing.
Well, that's what I wanted to say about human thriving for today, and I, I hope you enjoy the video, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. This has been the Hidebound Convivium. Thank you for watching.